Imagine constructing a house using typical building components. There will be concrete for a foundation, lumber, insulation, windows and doors, roofing materials, and all of the other necessary parts. But there is a catch. You cannot use anything to attach these parts together. So you may try to carefully prop up the lumber on the foundation. You can lay the wall components against the lumber and try to balance windows between boards. You may even somehow be able to lay the roof on top, but how long will this structure last? It is likely that without anything holding it together, it will soon collapse. We can think of a body in a similar fashion. A body is a structure that is composed of many different parts. To name a few, there is a skeleton, muscle tissue, many internal organs, and skin covering it all. But are these body parts simply floating loosely within a body, balanced on top of one another? The answer is certainly no. All of these components are bound together in a tight package, with all parts connecting to something else. In this lesson, we will learn about the important substances in a body that provide support, connection, and separation between parts. This group of tissues is known as connective tissue. Connective tissue is composed primarily of two elements, cells and a matrix. The types of cells found in connective tissue vary depending on the type of tissue they support. For example, red and white blood cells are found in blood, which is a fluid connective tissue. Adipocytes are fat cells found in adipose tissue or fat. And fibroblasts are cells found in large quantities in many different types of connective tissues. The matrix can be thought of as the substance in which the cells are embedded. The matrix can be fluid, semifluid, gelatinous, or ground substance and protein fibers. One very basic way to visualize this is to imagine jello with chunks of fruit in it. Jello is the matrix, and the fruit represents cells. A ground substance is a supportive medium made of water and large molecules. There are three types of protein fibers found within the matrix. Collagen fibers are very strong and provide flexibility. Elastic fibers are very stretchy and assume their original shape after being stretched. Finally, reticular fibers are very thin and provide support for many soft organs and blood vessels. Connective tissue in the body comes in a variety of forms. In fetuses and embryos, we find embryonic connective tissue. Past the point of birth, there is mature connective tissue. There are six major types of mature connective tissue. First, we will look at loose connective tissue. In this type, fibers are loosely entwined with many cells embedded. Adipose, or fat tissue, is an example of loose connective tissue. The subcutaneous tissue, or innermost layer of skin, is made up of adipose tissue as well as areolar tissue, another loose connective tissue. If we pull on our skin, we can see that it moves around quite easily because of this loose connection. Next, there is dense connective tissue. It has thicker, denser fibers and fewer cells. The matrix is made up mostly of collagen fibers with fibroblasts arranged in rows. This type of connective tissue forms tendons and ligaments, which attach muscle to bone and bone to bone, respectively. If you feel the back of your leg where your heel meets your ankle, you will locate your Achilles tendon. You can feel that it is very firm and tight. It is important to have strong connections between muscle and bone for our body to move properly. Cartilage is the third type of connective tissue. Many of us are familiar with this flexible tissue that makes up our nose and ears. Cartilage is strong due to the collagen fibers within its matrix, and it is resilient due to a gel matrix. Cartilage is also found in the body as a cushion within the skeletal system. Bones are a fourth example of connective tissue. Bones are made up of different types of connective tissue, including bone tissue and marrow. Bone tissue is either spongy or compact, depending on the organization of the cells and matrix. It may come as a surprise that blood is our next example of connective tissue. In this situation, blood plasma serves as the matrix. Plasma is the watery component of blood, and it contains many dissolved substances, such as proteins and nutrients. The cells found within this matrix are red and white blood cells as well as platelets. Finally, the lymph system 
is our last type of mature connective tissue. Many of us think of our lymph system when we are sick. We may check for small lumps or swollen lymph nodes under our jawbones. This system is an integral part of our immune system. Lymph is a fluid connective tissue that consists of a clear fluid and various cells, some of which include lymphocytes, a type of white blood cell. Although the term connective tissue is fairly self-explanatory, these tissues do more than simply connect body parts together. Because the types of connective tissue vary greatly, so do their functions. Adipose or fat tissue is a loose connective tissue that is specialized for storage. Although some people may have more adipose tissue than they would like, it does serve the important purpose of warmth and elasticity of certain organs. Areolar and reticular tissue are types of loose connective tissue that provide support, as well as fill up unused spaces in the body. Blood, a fluid connective tissue, provides a transport system within our body for oxygen and other important substances. Cartilage provides strong support and connection for our skeletal framework, and the function of bones is to support and protect soft tissues and organs in our body. There are over 200 disorders involving connective tissue. Some are inherited, but others are treatable. Cellulitis is an example of a treatable disorder. Cellulitis happens when the subcutaneous layer of skin contracts a bacterial infection. It can be treated by antibiotics, but if left untreated, can be deadly. Two examples of inherited connective disorders are Marfan syndrome and Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. Marfan syndrome is a genetic disorder that causes abnormal development of elastic fibers found in tissues. This disease can be life-threatening because the artery walls are weakened and the aorta has the potential to suddenly burst. Ehlers-Danlos syndrome encompasses many different types of diseases. Also known as EDS, this syndrome affects many different types of connective tissues, including bones, joints, and skin. These conditions are sometimes life-threatening, and there is no cure. Connective tissue provides support, transport, connection, and storage within a body. There are six major types of connective tissue, including loose connective tissue, dense connective tissue, bone, cartilage, blood, and lymph. There are many disorders involving connective tissue, including cellulitis, EDS, and Marfan syndrome.